Look guys, I'm not going to lie, I grew up calling all sparkling wines champagne. So did my parents, so did my friends, not realizing that in reality, all champagne is sparkling wine, but not every sparkling wine can be considered champagne. Since I started talking about champagne in the intro for this video, let's start with that one. Number one is champagne. And champagne, just like cava or prosecco, has significant levels of carbon dioxide, which is what makes those bubbles, which makes the uh, wine fizzy. And the way that champagne gets those bubbles is through the second fermentation that takes place inside of the bottle. Champagne's fizz comes from the process called méthode champenoise, or traditional method, if it is outside the Champagne region of France. And that is a very time-consuming and labor-intensive method to produce a sparkling wine with. And that is exactly the reason why Champagne stands above its competitors like Cava and Prosecco, not only in its quality, but in its taste and prestige, um, and in its price as well. So just to name a few steps of the process without going into a lengthy detail about each, know that there is a ton of steps when it comes to the traditional method or this méthode champenoise. So we have uh, pressing, we have first fermentation, then we have uh, blending, then a second fermentation happens, then we have lease aging, riddling, and I am certain there's still probably another step or two have an idea of how long that process takes. Lastly, about champagne, it is mainly made with three grape varieties, and those are Pinot Noir, Chardonnay, and Pinot Meunier. So um, although it's made with different levels of sweetness, or can be made with different levels of sweetness, most champagne is dry and it's very high in its acidity. The second sparkling wine we're going to talk about is Cava. Cava is a Spanish sparkling wine, mostly made in the region of Catalonia. And the grape varieties that are used there are Macabeo, Paralada, and Zarello grapes. And Cava can be both white uh, sparkling wine or rosé sparkling wine too. It comes in different forms. So the traditional method is the exact same method that's used in the region of Champagne called Méthode Champenoise. Um, and it's used here to produce Cava as well. And what you get out of that method where the second fermentation happens in the bottle itself, uh, like in Cava's and in Champagne, are the bubbles really are different. So the bubbles are much more fine and that really translates into a smoother wine experience when you drink those sparkling wines. Um, so a better mouthful, if you will. Cava is a light to medium body sparkling wine and uh, the taste of cava is really delicious. So it's got some zesty, uh, fruity, citrusy flavors to it, pretty high levels of minerality to uh, pairs really well with food. And one of my favorite things about cava which by the way is my personal favorite sparkling wine that's the one I that's my go-to um, is its price tag it costs just a fraction of the price of a champagne bottle but it is made in that same traditional method so if you haven't tried cava before I strongly recommend that you do matter of fact I have a special video that's dedicated to cava if you'd like to check it out I will go ahead and link it right here for you learn more about it. The next sparkling wine you must know about is the well-beloved Prosecco. Prosecco is made exclusively with Galera grape in the Veneto and Friuli areas of Italy. It's a very easy drinking bubbly and it's known for its fruity and floral notes. It's produced with a different method too. It's produced with a Charmat method or tank method, uh, it's called sometimes. So what that means is that the second fermentation with Prosecco happens inside of a stainless steel tank instead of the bottle like it happens with Cava or Champagne. And what that does, first of all, it produces a younger, crispier, fruitier wine, sparkling wine for us, but then it also lowers the cost of production by a lot and it's way less time consuming. So for that reason you will see that Proseccos are way more affordable than Champagnes are. Nonetheless it's a wonderful wine if you haven't tried it yet which is crazy because it's the most popular sparkling wine out there so give it a go. It is sweeter than Champagne uh, but on the label it is labeled as dry or off dry. The next sparkling wine is Cremant and Cremant is the wine that I'm having today. Cremant is a sparkling wine that's made outside of the Champagne region of France. There are eight 
regions of France that are producing Cremant, and the three grape varieties that are mostly used for it are Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, and Pinot Meunier, which are the exact three grape varieties that are used to produce Champagne. So because it can be made in eight different region, uh, regions of France, it's really hard to just have one description of how uh, a Cremant sparkling wine tastes. So for instance, the one that I have here with me today is the Burgundy Cremant, and this one specifically is very fruity, it's very citrusy. I consider it to be the best brunch sparkling wine. Um, it goes really well with eggs, with quiches, with some cheeses as well. So just remember that out of the eight regions that could produce uh, or that do produce Cremant wines in France, um, their microclimate um, really makes a difference in the wine's taste. And then uh, sometimes they use different grape varieties than the three that I've mentioned beforehand as well. So try them all. I've decided to spotlight a sparkling rosé as my fifth and final sparkling wine that you must know about, simply because of the variety that it offers. Sparkling rosé can be produced anywhere in the world. Matter of fact, all of the known and loved uh, sparkling wine styles like Champagne, Cava, Petnet, and some other ones uh, already have a rosé format to them. So because it can be produced pretty much anywhere with any grape varieties, um, the body type of a sparkling rosé really varies from a light to medium body to a fuller, richer sparkling rosé as well. So because of that, their tastes and aromas will differ and even uh, levels of minerality will differ as well. But nonetheless, I feel like they are a beautiful wine to serve. They're an absolute jewel to the table and they deserve to be in my list of five sparkling wines that you must know about. And here you have it. Thank you for sticking around for this short video on five sparkling wines that I think you must know about. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. I talk about everything wine related. So if you're into wine, we'll be friends. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. And until next time, cheers everyone.